Hurricane Beryl, which made landfall in Texas yesterday, has shut down ports, flights and schools for fear of destruction as it strengthens over the Gulf of Mexico. The hurricane holds the record for the earliest storm to reach the Category 5 ranking as it hit the Caribbean region, including Mexico, St. Vincent, Grenadines and Grenada, killing 10 people last week. Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra and today I'm going to be talking about the above normal hurricane season that the Atlantic Ocean is seeing this year and how global warming has contributed to it. Hurricane season officially began in the Atlantic Ocean with Hurricane Beryl, but scientists had already warned of an abnormal season this year. In its forecast in May, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration of the United States said that the ocean will see around 8 to 13 hurricanes between June and November this year, when the average is about 7, and they'll see 4 to 7 major hurricanes, while the average is about 3. There are several reasons for this prediction, but the top ones include increased sea surface temperatures, weaker trade winds, and the continuance of the La Nina conditions throughout the season. We'll get to these reasons in a bit. Let us take a closer look at Hurricane Beryl and how it stands on the historic scale of hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean. Hurricanes, also known as cyclones or tropical cyclones, depending on which part of the world they originate in, are low atmospheric pressure systems with circular winds that develop over warm tropical waters. They are ranked on the Saffir Simpson scale from 1 to 5, with 5 being the most dangerous with winds above 157 miles per hour. The last time a Category 5 storm occurred in the Atlantic Ocean in July was Hurricane Emily in 2005. But even that was in mid-July. Beryl therefore broke records of how soon in the hurricane season can a Category 5 storm occur. In February of this year, a study published by two US scientists in the PNAS journal made a case for including a category 6 in the conventional scale to categorize tropical storms that are so intense that the current scale cannot quite comprehend it. For example, Hurricane Patricia in 2015, while categorized as a category 5 storm, had winds reaching 215 miles per hour at one point. Given the intensity of tropical storms brought on by climate change, the study points out that the existing measuring scale will soon be unable to convey the risk of a cyclone in the future. How exactly does global warming due to anthropogenic emissions contribute to more intense cyclones? Let's take a look. The NOAA website describes certain characteristics that are needed for tropical cyclones to form. First, an atmospheric disturbance 200 miles north or south of the equator, moist air near the mid-level of the atmosphere, and most importantly, ocean waters that are warmer than 27 degrees Celsius. In its hurricane forecast for this year, the NOAA said that sea surface temperatures at the main development region of hurricanes in the Atlantic are at record levels. To put it in context, the sea surface temperatures at the North Caribbean right now are around 29.4 degrees Celsius. We know that 2023 was the hottest year on record for land temperatures, but it was also the hottest on record for sea surface temperatures, reaching 1 degrees above the average temperature level. 2024 has been no better. The Climate Change Institute at the University of Maine has a daily sea surface temperature tracker, which shows that in the first six months of 2024, the daily temperatures have been the highest in a decade. NASA's Ocean Heat Content Tracker shows a rapidly increasing graph, indicating that 90% of global warming due to increased greenhouse gases has occurred in the oceans of the world. Closer to home in India, the print has already covered how the Indian Ocean is expected to be in a state of permanent heat wave by 2100 if emissions continue at the same rate. Current warmer sea surface temperatures have caused massive coral bleaching events in the Gulf of Mannar this year, and could be devastating for marine biodiversity in the coming years. NASA and NOAA scientists have pointed out how increased warming would mean there's more moisture in the air, which would lead to intensified rainfall and stronger tropical storms. The sixth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which was published in 2021, also says with high confidence that climate change will contribute to increased average and maximum rainfall in tropical cyclones, atmospheric rivers 
and extratropical cyclones. Not just rain, but the average peak wind speeds of tropical cyclones are also expected to increase with increased warming. So, while climate change might not lead to more number of tropical cyclones in the future, it is expected that they will increase in intensity. Thank you for tuning into the print. Follow our social media for more such analysis.